Okay, so this is Paul Dirac, and this is the equation called the Dirac equation. You don't need to know what it means, but he basically used it to predict the existence of antimatter. So what he said was that for every particle, there's an antiparticle, which has the same mass, but the opposite quantum numbers. For example, it would have the opposite charge. So if, if one particle, if a particle is positive, the antiparticle will be negative. And it also has the opposite barrier number, lepton number, strangers. And we'll come on to that later. Okay, so particles and antiparticles can be created in a process called pair production, where you have a high energy gamma photon coming in, and that turns into a particle and its corresponding antiparticle. So in this example, it's turning into an electron and an anti-electron. An anti-electron is another name for it called a positron. As you can see, the electron is negatively charged and the, uh, the positron is positively charged. Okay, so we also learn about rest mass. So if we take the rest mass of the electron here, the because the positron has the same mass as well, it also has the same rest mass, 0.511 mega electron volts. So that means the gamma photon would have to have a minimum of two times 0.511 mega electron volts. So you'll have to have 1.022 mega electron volts as a minimum. In reality, it's going to have to have more than that because momentum needs to be conserved. So this gamma photon does have momentum in that direction. Even though it doesn't have mass, it does have um, momentum going that way. So these electrons will need to have momentum, overall momentum, going in that direction as well to conserve momentum. So that means they'll, have, they'll need to have some kinetic energy. So that means that the gamma photon would have to have energy for this to make the rest mass, plus some for the kinetic energy as well. Okay, so the thing about particles and antiparticles is that if a particle touches its corresponding antiparticle, they will annihilate themselves. They turn into two gamma photons that are emitted in opposite directions like this. Okay, so in this example, we've got a proton and an antiproton. The antiproton is represented by this line on top of the P there, okay, sometimes known as P bar. Okay, so that represent that that's used to denote an antiparticle. So what happens when they touch is when the proton touches the antiparticle is that it just turns into a photon. So the rest mass energy of the proton and antiparticle proton turn into the energy of the gamma photons. Okay, so this is obviously a problem, which means that you can't store antimatter because as soon as it touches the, mat the corresponding matter particle, it will turn into energy in the form of gamma photons. So there is one way to store it, which is to suspend it between in an electric field or a magnetic field like this, as shown in the diagram here. Okay, so antimatter isn't just theory, we use them all the time. For example, in medical imaging. In a positron emission tomography, uh, p the patient Im takes in something that emits positron, which is like an anti-electron. Okay, so when this anti-electron touches a nearby electron, it annihilates itself, okay, emitting two gamma photons. And while this is going on, the patient is inside some kind of detector. And the detector detects, picks up these two gamma waves, and it can use that to form an image like this.